Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the new season and Austria started already we had the first round if you saw my preview you were already aware of that I'm gonna do a little uh, review of that I decided yeah let's make it all Austria in there on the background and it's all my Austrian Bundesliga jerseys that I have they're just all from one team so be it so be it it was a successful start to the season uh, for this season I'm planning to a little bit revised the way I've been doing reviews to not have it get too long but let's see how that will work out I definitely will put kind of the final informations uh, unless uh, on towards the back uh, unless there's something really interesting that I want to point out but I uh, will get to that uh, headlines we had the first round and VAR already had two if not three big decisions uh, to make and uh, it was largely successful, though taking a whole lot of time. The, uh, the other thing that uh, really stood out is that we had uh, full stadiums. Uh, I mean, not all Austria, we rarely have full stadiums, but there were lots of spectators for uh, Austria. I mean, the um, scheduling helped Rapid always will have many spectators. Sturm against Salzburg is a major matchup, and then having the uh, first derby in Kärnten or Carinthia, as it's called in English. Uh, in over 30 years also helped uh, spectators a lot and the weather was amenable although there were games that were heavily influenced by the weather and of course uh, the big result uh, was that Rapid is losing at home to Hartberg. I want to very very uh, quickly go through the games. I actually saw highlights and I saw one mask. Uh, fully. Uh, the opening game between, between Sturm and Salz, Salzburg uh, was in the end then all Salzburg, but at least we had the first VAR decision in Austrian Bundesliga history with the opening goal for Sturm Graz that was actually an own goal by uh, Salzburg captain Ulmer, uh, where there was first um, an offside, then maybe there was a foul in there. It took a four and a half minutes to get the decision, but they got the decision right. So that was at least uh, a success. The way they do VAR in Austria is they do the German model where um, the uh, VAR referee is sitting in Vienna watching the game. Yeah, I think it works for uh, in many uh, ways uh, well this way. But overall Salzburg was just too much especially Karim Adeyemi, uh, who kind of had, I think he played before, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but he uh, had his first start scoring two goals uh, and assisting a third one through Christensen. The last goal, uh, it looked like it's handball, but even there it went from the chest in. So yeah, uh, was over very impressive what Salzburg is showing. And again, Salzburg, the class of the league. Um, I don't want to say that what Lask was showing against Altach was impressive, but uh, except for a huge chance for Altach, ironically uh, manufactured by two players that were still with Lask last season um, in the 15th minute, where then suddenly Reiter, and they're both loans, loanies, Reiter, uh, and all alone in front of our goal, not may, may, may making it. That was the only chance for Alta. I think Lask had the a game under control. It took a little while. I think it was also typically uh, summer uh, soccer, you know, the heat and, and, and so on. It took a little while to get going. Uh, there was an offset goal for Lask, uh, correctly called uh, off. But then in the 36th minute after a free, uh, after cor a corner ball comes to Wiesinger who takes a long range shot wonderfully into the net. It should have been two or three goals for Lask, but a, the goalie for uh, Altach, Kazali, had a really good game. I mean, he saved, uh, I think, around the 7th, 75th, um, a big chance by Ragush, where I think his hand was in behind the line, but the ball was just not. But I, as far as I know, uh, also we don't have goal, te goal line technology yet. <laughs> Go figure. Um, and then, yeah, uh, if you're a little bit more, especially I'm looking at Goiginger, uh, if he has a little bit more vision, he could have played people free in front of goal, but he's more of those, he wants to kind of uh, do it all by himself and then look a little bit late only when he has no chance. So uh, that was kind of the thing. It was also has to be said that for a game that was played in summer, 
it was pitch black in the second half. It looked like an evening game because there was such a storm coming down, but it was not bad enough for the game to be interrupted or called off. At the same time in Vienna, uh, we had Rapid Vienna, who had just beaten Sparta Prague. Uh, if you haven't seen those highlights, I, I have not talked about it here, but the first goal by Rap of Rapid Vienna in that is, is a worldie that you definitely want to see. Uh, look that up uh, somewhere online. Uh, but seemingly having the other game against Sparta Park or already come up, Rapid Vienna actually thought, yeah, Hartberg with so many new players and they need to get going, da, 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 da. this will be an easy, this will be a cakewalk. No, it was not. Hartberg actually uh, fought hard, had already a few chances, um, and get then a goal through Tadic right before the half. Rapid then tried, could not, and then a penalty, also VAR penalty through Tadic uh, in the 67th, sets Hartberg on a winning road. Rather surprised for a surprising result. Uh, Tirol against Admir Wacker was all about Andreas Herzog, the record international for Austria, uh, for Austria. Finally making his debut for a club team with Admira. Um, both teams hit the post once. I think Tirol, uh, or Wattens I should say, they are now, but yeah, that's a story for another video. Um, they took the lead through Avuja, um, were looking really strong going forward, um, but cannot hang on. And even with a man down, because uh, uh, Admira player got in, in injured deep into stoppage time for Saga, then puts it into the net and it's 1-1, one, one, uh, resulted definitely is more for Admira. Then the big Corinthian derby, there, there were many storylines. I mean, first of all, the two oldest coaches in the league with Packard for Klagenfurt and Robin Dutt for Wolfsburg. Uh, and both of them are just just around 60, which I found is kind of weird. It tells you that uh, we have kind of a lot of young coaches in the league. Um, the game was first dominated by Klagenfurt, but then a penalty was given. Uh, and that was one of those where, yeah, Austria needs to learn that there was contact there. And the referee then said, yeah, this is a foul. Austrians still not quite used to that. I thought, yeah, it's a pretty clear call. I mean, we saw it at the Euro. So, I mean, not used, but, you know, it's not as regular. Uh, and so a little bit against the run of play, Wolfsburg took the lead, but then Wolfsburg was largely the better team. Um, and Klagenfurt really had to fight, but uh, overdid it a little bit. Then there was the huge war scene where uh, at first you thought it was a penalty. There was uh, Morera on the edge of the box, ball on the hand uh, and there was only a Wolfsburg um, a striker there and the situation was such that first they thought it was a penalty, no it was uh, outside of the box. So they decided that and then they were checking for a possible red card and that took over six minutes where they thought it was the last man and you could see that he kind of batted it down and so he was sent off. Still, Klagenfurt can get a 90th minute equalizer through Markus Pink. And then another surprise, and it's a big fat double zero for Vienna, which doesn't happen that often uh, these days. Uh, where Austria Vienna, although they had a little bit more control in the first half, in the end they uh, uh, managed to lose that game because Ried scored really two wonderful goals, goals in the second half. They had a one phase where they were really uh, putting Austria Vienna into the uh, back on the back side and uh, Nutz plays a wonderful pass uh, to Bayer who lobs it over the keeper. A really nice goal and a, a great free kick by Offenbach in 67th. Pickler pulls one back. Austria cannot find an equalizer. And so that ends the first round. As I said, tables are not telling us a whole lot. I don't want to be too gloaty about the uh, rapid loss because the next round rapid uh, will come to Lusk. I will not be watching the game because I'm in the car to the airport. So yeah, um, I, I don't even know if I will be able to do a round of video, but let's see. I don't know how my internet speed where we are going. Uh, the hotel was a little, a little bit shaky. If I'll be able to make one, there will be no background. It will be somewhere in a hotel and we'll see uh, how this will 
go. In any case, uh, those were the highlights. I hope you liked this video, uh, the new format a little bit. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you did. Drop a line below if you've seen some highlights or if you enjoy videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.